form field properties. Presented by the Idaho Digital Accessibility Consortium. Our fillable PDF form is looking pretty good, but there's a couple things we need to do to make it work for both electronic and print users. In our electronic format, our form fields have some different contrasts. So in this instance, it's a kind of a light blue, kind of light purplish color. And so that helps the form field stand out. So I know where that I need, where I need to click on to type. Um, I can use my tab key and it jumps through the different form fields. That works great for electronic. If I look at my print preview though, none of those, none of that contrast is there. So what I want to do is draw in lines for my form fields to provide that guide for print document users. And I do that by using the text field properties. So I open my prepare form tools and I can right click on my form field. So in the prepare form tools, I have a section called fields. From here, I can open the properties and under appearance, I can change the border color. In this case, I'm going to select black and I can select my line style. I want it just to be underlined because that is going to give the most flexibility for the person printing the form to have enough room to write comfortably. So you can repeat that process for all of your short text fields. So select your border color and underline style. You can also right click the field on the document, select properties, and then change your form field. And one of the nice things about Adobe is whatever menu item you were on the last time you were in the text field properties, it stays there for when you open it again. So you shouldn't have to go back and forth between all those different menu items available in the text field properties. If you want, you can also double click the field on the page and it will open the field properties and you can set the border color and underline. And so we also have these two, so our first four questions under about you, and then our next two questions in the responsibility section. Uh, estimate what percentage your job is dedicated to document creation and to web creation. Those were also short text fields. So I'm going to add um, an underline for those two as well. So there we go. If we preview our forms, those fields are now there. So we have the shading, the contrast for our form fields, and then we also can see that border. To see that even more clearly, take a look at the print preview, and you can see those lines are showing up on our print preview. For your large text fields, usually just having the space on the page is good enough for the print version. So you don't really need to put a border around the large text field, but there is one property you want to adjust for your large text fields. Let's look at this other text field under tools, what tools are available at your agency to make accessible documents. In that other text field, if I start typing and I have a long field, the text starts scrolling instead of wrapping. I don't want that because then I'm going to have to manipulate that text more. It's not going to be um, as user friendly for my electronic user. So. How can I adjust that? Using those prepare or those text field properties, you can right click on your large text fields and under options, select multi-line. And what that does is that wraps the text so that it fits within that text field. And that also helps if you have um, a lot of text, it starts to automatically adjust. So I'm just gonna print in a bunch of stuff. So there it adds a scroll element. Um, and that you maybe don't want that either. Because again, if this is printed for whatever reason, some of that content is going to be cut off. So in our options, we also want to uncheck scroll long text. So now when we start typing. I'm just going to hold down my A key so I can demonstrate content here. It's going to stop 
at a certain point. It's not going to allow any more content in there. So that is one way to kind of limit, um, especially if anyone has to print this form, um, it's gonna prevent any of that text from being cut off if it's printed. If someone, and th so that's appropriate for these shorter areas that you don't want to have that scrolling text. So I'm gonna go down for my other large text fields um, so what do you feel your current skill level? I'm going to turn on multi-line and I'm going to turn off scroll long text. And for my last three questions under challenges and training, I'm going to do the same thing. Turn on multi-line and turn off scroll text. If you think your users are going to need that extra space, account for that in the design of the document and leave that space available for a longer, uh, a larger text box. So now our form is really starting to look like a form. Uh, we have uh, borders where we need borders. We have turned off settings that make it work for both electronic and print users. But there's one other thing we need to do to set our form field properties. And that is we need to name our form field. Right now, the default is just a generic name, the type of field and a number. The number corresponds to the tab order, the order that users are taken through the form using the tab key. That's the tab order. But we want them to be more descriptive. So there's a couple different ways to adjust this. If we open the field properties by either clicking on our form field twice with our mouse, that opens the text field properties. We can also right click our form field and open properties. Or under prepare form, we can right click our form from the list and select property. So there's lots of different ways to open the property field. But what we're trying to get to is on the general tab, the name. We want to adjust the name. And for the most part, the name of the field is going to correspond with the question. So for this particular field, it is the date field. And so you can also right click and select rename. So right click in the fields list under prepare form tools and select rename. And so this next form field is going to be called name. If you have lengthy questions, what organization are you affiliated with? You don't need to name the form field that entire question. I recommend using something shorter like organization. So this gives you kind of a quick overview of what is this question asking. And so you can go through and continue to adjust those. So what is your job title? I'm just gonna call that title. When you have multiple choices within a question, try to think of how you're going to name those particular choices. So for what tools are available at your agency to make accessible documents, I'm going to name the first option Adobe Acrobat Pro. I'm gonna name this just Adobe. So kind of a shorthand version. The next is going to be Google. The next is going to be Microsoft. And prepared templates, or just templates. And then other, since I have an other checkbox and I also have another text box, I need to differentiate them somehow. Each name needs to be unique. So I'm going to call the other checkbox, other check. And then I'm going to call the text box, other text. So that way, each of those options is unique and it tells me the different uh, type of tool available or the different type of form for those two responses. When you have something like yes, no, I don't know or I'm unsure, especially if you have similar, like if we had a second question that had this exact same setup, we would need a way to differentiate the different tools or the different form fields rather. So for this, I'm going to shorthand the question that's associated with the response. So what that looks like is the question says, do you know what tools you need to create accessible documents or web content? I'm just going to call this tools yes, tools no, and tools not sure. So that way I can tell pretty quickly in my list of form fields what the different form 
is. For responsibility, there's two questions, one about document creation, one about web creation. So I'm going to call the first one percent doc and the second one percent web. For my scale, this is going to follow a similar format to our other multiple choice options. We need to identify each different checkbox as a different name. So for my first one, I'm just going to call it not comfortable. My second is going to be somewhat comfortable and so on and so forth. And next we have these last four questions. What do you feel your current skill level is in creating accessible documents or web content? So I'm going to name this um, doc web skills. So again, kind of a shorthand for what the question is asking. And then our last three questions, what are your biggest challenges related to document creation? So I'm gonna call this doc challenge. Our next question is asking about document training. So I'm gonna call it doc training. And I'm gonna call this very last question since it's talking about future trainings. Um, if What would you attend if we held in, um, what trainings would you attend in the future? I'm just gonna call this future training. So now when we look at our list of, oop, and if any don't get changed, go ahead and go back and change those. So I'm gonna call this doc challenge. There we go. So now you can quickly scan your fields and know what the different fields are. And so this can be really helpful to, to scan and proof your document. The other text field property that is extremely important is the tooltip. It's so important that we are dedicating an entire session just to the tooltip. So we're not talking about it today. But in our next segment, we will talk about how to craft tooltip language and how that relates to an accessible PDF document. So keep this in mind. This was one that you absolutely have to use, but we are not going to focus on it today because it's so important. We want to really focus all our time on just the tooltip. So for this segment, um, the main takeaway is your Form fields should have borders if they are appropriate for the type of form field, and they also need to be named, so something specific um, and unique to that form field. After you've set those properties, you can save your document, and we will be ready for part four, where we talk about crafting tooltip messages.